So this is head of the table. What do we do now, my mother asks, sitting where my grandmother used to sit at the kitchen table. Her siblings have joined her, their four chairs cardinal points on a newly restored compass. They think we, the six grandchildren, can't hear them now that they have sent us to the living room to play Clue and watch the Red Sox. But their voices are approaching thunder to our listening hearts, which are soft and unripened, even though we have lost before and our ages range from 16 to 30. It doesn't help that none of us are speaking. Maybe the TV play-by-play -play has lulled us into nine innings of respite, or maybe my brother and four cousins are still caught in last, night, last night's riptide, just as I am. 18 hours have passed, but I could swear the words, she's gone, she's at peace, have just left my father's mouth, and the wise little girl inside me has only begun crying and reminding him of what she already knows. There's nothing peaceful about funerals and wills and last goodbyes. There's nothing peaceful about the husk of you that's left when grief shucks you dry. Mm. There's nothing peaceful about looking out the window at a world unchanged and indifferent to this familial seismic shift. <laughs> but this time, it's not death that quakes me. Cancer rarely kills by stealth anymore. Mm. This time, it's the ash fall voices in the other room and the knowledge of where their speakers sit. This time, it's the unspoken inheritance that will come 20, 30 years, maybe even sooner, when my brother and I will find ourselves in our own kitchen chairs, asking the same question my mother asked today, mm. and accepting crowns that will have already begun to flicker. Mm.